actually it's it's remarkable just how much energy is involved in in doing these calculations associated with bitcoin mining the way that it's approached right across the internet is for a number of years has been well let's look at well how many hash attempts are being taken how many you know what's the what's the the rate of actually attempting to crack this code if we're going to put it in that context uh, versus what's the sort of energy cost in terms of the efficiency of the hardware that's being used to solve this. That's one aspect of the puzzle. A better way of doing it, in, in, which is described in this rather good paper, which I'm sure Sean will link to below, is to look at the economics. But for me, from a physicist's perspective, it's really quite neat. In many ways, from many perspectives, it's what's called a Fermi problem. So a Fermi problem, the physicist Fermi, was really adept at working out reasonable estimates for quantities. A really good example is, just here's a raw question, how many, and this was the first sort of, or the archetypal Fermi problem. How many piano tuners are there in Chicago? Or we could do that, how many piano tuners are there in Nottingham? So you gotta think about, well, first of all, you get hit by the, I don't know, how am I ever gonna answer that? Let's look at estimates. So let's think about, right, what's the population? How many people do you have per house? You know, let's say probably less than or nothing. Let's do it for nothing. Say three hundred thousand. How many do you have per house? Say two or three, somewhere like that. Maybe two and a half kids. But let's go with two, just as a, as an example. So many. What fraction of households would have a piano? Don't know. Five percent. Then we'd have to think about uh, how often does a piano need to be tuned? I don't know. Once a year, maybe. Let's say once a year. You take up all these and you stack them up, and you it's estimate piled upon estimate. But what's remarkable? is that you can get a pretty good estimate in many cases. Obviously, each one of those estimates has got its own error value and its own uncertainty. But sometimes what we want to do is get, you know, calculate to the nth decimal place. Other times we just want those estimates. And when you're coming back to the Bitcoin issue and the energy consumption issue, so when you look across the web, you'll find many, many different estimates. And it's effectively a Fermi problem because nobody really knows. Nobody really knows, no, unless you can take each piece of equipment or each piece of hardware and say, you know, somebody could be running the absolute state of the art kit and then somebody could have a farm of playstations. We're not going to get a very, you know, an estimate that's accurate to the nth decimal place, but we can at least think about, well, could we put a lower limit on this? Well, let's think about, you know, absolute state of the art. And let's think about the energy efficiency of the absolute state of the art. And this paper's quite useful because we turn to table one, we find right at the top, and I'm sure many in the audience will be much more familiar with this than I am, this, this equipment. Ant Miner S9, hash rate of 14 tera hashes per second. So tera, 10 to the 12. We find that the power efficiency, so the joules, per giga hash, so the amount of energy that's chewed up, a giga hash, which means a total of 10 to the 9 hash calculations per second, is of the order of 0.098 joules per giga hash. It's a very recent paper, but what you can see is the, um, the power efficiency. So we need to think about, well, how many actual operations, how many attempts, hash attempts are happening per second, and it is an absolute astronomical number literally astronomical. It's 2.6 by 10 to the 18 per second. That's what's, you know, that, that's the number of hash um, attempts that are happening uh, across the entire sort of Bitcoin ecosystem, if you want to put it, um, which is a remarkable number. It is truly astronomical because the number of galaxies in the observable universe is only of order 10 to the 9. So this is 10 to the 9 by 10 to the 9, that number. That's a, just a mind-bogglingly astronomical number. So that's 10 to the 18. So that's 10 to the 9 giga hash. Let's put it that way. So that means what we have to do is, to, is we need to take this number, this 0 0.098, and multiply it by the 2.6 by 10 to the 9. We work that out. It turns out that we are talking about 2.6 gigawatts of power. So I've just translated there from power to energy. Remember, power is the rate of doing work, which is the rate of energy expenditure effectively, which is different from energy. We'll come back and think of energy in a second. So it's the difference between, for example, kilowatts, power, and kilowatt hours, energy. But you work it out and it turns out to be two point, off the order 2.6 gigawatts. Adding on lots of other decimal places, pointless because of the estimates that we've used in there. In fact, you could make an argument that even having one decimal place under this circumstance is probably pushing it. Because we have shown this, this is just really, we're thinking about a lower limit we do not know. Actually, obviously all machines involved in Bitcoin mining are not of this specification. We also haven't bundled in, for example, the costs associated with cooling 
We haven't bundled in, and this is, this is purely the efficiency, we haven't bundled in um, costs to sort it with, actually with making the devices as well. So there are capital costs and there are usage costs, etc. So it really is, it's a physics problem, but it's also a coupled physics and economic problem. One of the first papers that got a lot of attention that looked into this was um, from some researchers in Ireland back in 2014. 2.6 gigawatts is not that far removed from the 3.1 gigawatts um, of, that Ireland uses, which is, uh, given my accent, is fairly close to home, close to my heart. And it's now, there's a website called Digiconomist, where you can look up the, the current energy consumption and all the values associated with, with Bitcoin mining. And we're now, we've gone beyond Ireland and we're now up, I think it exceeds the uh, Czech Republic's um, consumption. So, and it's, it's going up, it's steadily going up. So if you go to that Digiconomist website, which I thoroughly recommend, there are many items associated with it, but one of those items is the, the, um, the cost per transaction, basically in terms of the energy cost, in terms of kilowatts per hour. And it turns out that it's off the order of per transaction of a thousand kilowatts per hour. It's difficult to put that in sort of context sometimes, but that's an awful lot of energy. When you, you total it up in terms of cost per kilowatt hour, in the UK that's something like, uh, it fluctuates obviously, but it's something like 14 pence per kilowatt hour. In the US, uh, something like 12. In fact, this paper produces much smaller estimates in terms of its averages, talking about maybe 5 cents per kilowatt hour. Anyway, we're talking about orders of magnitude. It's a Fermi problem again. And you add that up and you compare 14 pence per kilowatt hour times a thousand kilowatt hours. So there's a question then of cooling. If you've got massive farms, you've obviously got to add in the financial cost of keeping them cool. You've got to, I guess, the, you know, the, the bar goes up and up and up and up and up in terms of the computational um, power you need to process this and it's built into the system to have this sort of arms race in terms of building up the, the complexity. So you've got to build that in, you've got to keep your kit um, up to date. But you add that all in still, at the moment, the pure economics of this are, is that we haven't hit the ceiling. That 2.6 gigawatts is definitely not the ceiling. There's an awful lot more in terms of where the, the, the energy is going to upscale. I've just got to stress, um, though, remember, these are all estimates. That's the, we're, we're coming back to that Fermi problem idea, that's what we're doing. You might say we're plucking values out of the thin air. We're not, the, you know, they're obviously informed values, but it makes me smile when I see, you know, people quoting these values to three and four decimal places when the air bars like that and they're quoting with a precision like that. The interesting thing of course is this is considering the whole system on aggregate. For the individual prospector as it were, for the individual miner, is there's a hell of a lot of risk or there can be a hell of a lot of risk involved um, and you've got to, you know, it depends on how brave you are I guess financially whether you want to, to take that risk. So this is how Bitcoin mining works, right, in brief. So we have a block and at the top of the block is the hash of the previous block and a number, right, which we're going to call our nonce. This is a number we're making up. Let's